Ira, um, a, a tough result to take and particularly disappointed to concede the opening two goals from the set pieces. Yeah. I mean, they were good set pieces, of course, but uh, if you speak to our players, they, they're a little bit aggrieved. You know, they, they thought that there were infringements for both the goals, but we didn't, we weren't lucky enough to have those infringements recognised by the referee, so we find ourselves two goals to kneel down. And then to compound things, of course, we really give them the, the game which really puts the, the goal that really puts the game to bed from one of our set pieces, you know, from one of our corner kicks. The corner kick wasn't wasn't long enough, and uh, from the ball back in straight into the goalkeeper's arms, and a quick counter attack, and suddenly we're three goals to kneel down. And that probably effectively any, any hope we might have had of getting back into the game. The real disappointment then is the last two goals, but I must take responsibility for that because. Players, players were tiring. Obviously, we went needed. We thought some fresh legs. The fresh legs of the young lads, and it was too much to ask for them to go on and and deal with a rampant Arsenal. And as a result, we lose the game heavily. No supporter likes to lose a game five 0 But it's the second time in in a week that fans have showed some discontent, and they uh, put the banner up uh, today during the match. Just wondering what you've made of, of that message and, and how the fans have been this week. Well, I don't, I don't deal with the fans <laughs> during the course of the week, only on match days. Um, I think the one on Wednesday was, was understandable because they didn't, or wouldn't have been able to understand why we took Ezzy off the field. You know, they just thought I was probably making a strange decision to take Ezzy off the field and not somebody else. But we had our reasons for that, which I've explained in some detail. And no doubt that message has got across. Today, it's a different type of message. It's, it's quite a, a detailed one. It's, it's aimed at probably everybody in the club, it, it, it seemed. Uh, all I can say is I think they're totally entitled to their opinion in that respect. I do understand their frustration, even anger and disappointment that things haven't gone better. We can make our excuses, which we've been doing, because certain things have worked against us during this period of time. But the bottom line is that if we're going to go forward and avoid relegation and, 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 and do well. We need those fans with us and hopefully we can do our best to keep them on board and we can only do that by winning four matches and playing better than we than we did today. Sam. Hello, Roy. You've, you've, Hi, been, you've, Sam. Been, you've been in uh, tough situations before. You must have every confidence that you know, about experience and working your way out of it. Yeah, I think so, Sam. I, I, I believe in the team. I mean, the fact is, at the moment we are we are stretched to, to, to say the least. And furthermore, our attacking threat. You know, when you lose Elise and Ayu at the same time, is is obviously blunted, and that will change when those two players come back. I don't think that in the last game, despite the fact we've not won them. We've been outplayed that often. Um, we've been in games, even against the, even against the Liverpools and the Chelseas and, and the Brightons and the, and the Arsenal's. Today we were outplayed, in particular towards the end of the game. But up to that period, I, I thought that the players stuck at their task. I thought they showed that they're still committed and they, they're still wanting to do well for the club. Uh, but of course, the result. Decides everything. At three nil, it wouldn't have been quite so bad. It was those last two goals that really uh, bring about the the doom and gloom situation, if you like, because five nil was a very bad defeat at any level. Uh, Roy, as you kind of point to the, wasn't long ago you were getting that great point at Man City and beating Brentford. Is it just the way things are in the modern world that patience is quite sort of short, and, and hmm. you know, a couple of weeks later? facing fans like, like we saw today. Yeah. I think it is part it's part and parcel of football. I think it probably always has been. I mean obviously these days where staying in the Premier League is so important and relegation is such a fear for everybody. Uh, the uh, that type of situation might come around a bit quicker than it may have done many years ago. But I've been working in these modern times for a long time as well. Since I came back to England in 2008, nothing's changed since then. Uh, the fact is, when a team isn't doing as well as it should be doing, someone needs to be held responsible, and that's always the manager. 
And the other crush? Yes. James. Right, um, just after you shook hands at full time, you stood on the touchline for quite a long time. I'm just wondering what was going through your mind. I was waiting for the player, <coughs> waiting for the players to come off. That was all. Just to wait, good, you know. Just looked like you were kind of taking it all in a bit. Oh, I see. So you've got some, uh, you've got some theory there, have you? No, 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 no. I see. No, actually, I, I, I very rarely dash straight down the tunnel uh, at the end of games. Half time sometimes, but in the game. So if you, if you watch me carefully, you could probably find that I stand quite often uh, at the end of games. Right, looking at some of the players at the end of the game when they walked over to the fans' club, in Mark in particular, he looked really down, really distraught. Yeah. What's your message to the players now? What's your message then to get the club out of this little grind they're in? Well, the message has got to be that, first of all, they've got to stick very much with the work that they have been doing on the training field and, and, and continue to do. They've got to make certain that they, they stick together in terms of their attitude, because, to be honest, I didn't think the attitude during the course of the game was particularly debatable. I didn't see people losing hope or losing faith. We, we kept going. We were playing against a better team. That was the problem. You know, they're, they're so so talented and it's so difficult to get the ball from them and to create goal chances that you find yourself under that pressure for long periods. But I thought, that, I thought we kept going. I'm not prepared myself, pardon me, to allow that last 10 or 15 minutes where they scored those two goals to totally um, blind my, uh, or, or, or change my opinion of what I thought the team tried to do and, and, and kept trying to do during the bulk of the game. At 3-0 I'd have probably been here and saying, well, you know, we, we lost to a better team and you know, talking about this, the set plays. At 5-0 it just gives the impression that you've been totally and utterly battered from start to finish. But... Um, I didn't think that was the case personally, but no, the message has got to be, listen, you know, there's, there's no magic wands in football, there's nothing that can be said, it's all very well having press conferences and saying and answering questions, but it's got to be done on the field of play, and that starts on the training field, and then it's brought onto the field of play, and I think we've shown over the last year that we do have capabilities in that respect, and I'm not prepared to suddenly dismiss any of those capabilities on the basis of losing one in up at... at uh, Everton to a wonder free kick and, and lose into the Arsenal Football Club away from home today. Okay. Fine, sorry. Uh, Roy, look, I know you've got a great relationship with Steve and Dougie in particular as well. And you mentioned that when the results aren't going against you, you know the pressure comes on one person as a manager. Do you feel supported by the board? Because obviously we talk about the fans' message. They're not just criticising maybe what they're seeing on the pitch, it's off the pitch as well. Have you got, you and the players got the support of the, the board and those above? Well, well, that's a question for them, isn't it? You know, but I'm a, if you're asking me, have I ever felt that there is a lack of support from those? The answer is no, I haven't. I think they've been good. But I mean now, in the situation that you're obviously discussing or the, the scenario that you're obviously envisaging, that's got to be a question for them. OK. Thanks very much, everyone. OK. Thanks.